You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. Dave Hunt's book, When Will Jesus Come?, subtitled Compelling Evidence for the Soon Return of Christ, is the topic for this segment of our program. And last week, before we ran out of time, we were discussing the historic rejection in Christianity of the rapture of the church, which, if you're not familiar with the biblical teaching, is the return of Jesus Christ to take his bride, his saints, all those who have put their faith in him, past and present, to heaven. It involves the resurrection of the bodies of those who died in Christ and the instant translation of the bodies of living believers into new incorruptible bodies. The doctrine is given to us in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, John 14, and many other verses. Nevertheless, professing Christians, both Catholic and Protestants, regard the rapture as unbiblical. Catholic teachings of purgatory and indulgences nullify the direct access to heaven that the rapture promises. And although one of the cries of the Reformers was sola scriptura, the Bible alone, as one teaching authority, they held on to many practices and beliefs that were carryovers from the Catholic Church, such as infant baptism and the rejection of the rapture. And Dave, last week we started to address the contemporary rejection of the rapture among those who call themselves evangelicals, beginning with the erroneous teaching in 1948, something called the Manifest Sons of God. This was in uh, Canada, I believe, where this started. Yeah, uh, Tom, um, the rejection of the rapture by the Catholics reminds me I was being interviewed on a program I can't even remember when or where. But uh, we had a, it's a call in. And uh, one fellow calling in said, I'm a Catholic. And I want you to know I don't agree with you. And, and I said, well, thank you very much. <laughs> because there are an awful lot of people who call themselves evangelicals who claim Catholics and evangelicals agree together. And he says, and I certainly don't believe in the rapture. And I said, well, of course, as a Catholic, you couldn't believe in the rapture because you believe in purgatory. And people have to spend different lengths of time in purgatory. So I don't know how you could have a rapture of everybody at once. Some, some of them wouldn't even have finished suffering in purgatory. Uh, so it, it just shows how uh, unbiblical this doctrine is. Right. And certainly, Catholics, there, there are exceptions, Dave. Uh, a Catholic can go directly to heaven, but... I never met one who thought he would. Well, no, because uh, it's only going to take place maybe moments after uh, a Catholic is baptized as an infant. So that would be one uh, of the rare exceptions. Well, they've been cleansed of all their sins through baptism. That's, w that's what baptism does, according to the doesn't Catholic Church. doesn't help you too much, right. does it? What about the sins you commit later? Well, you got to go to purgatory right. because Christ's suffering on the cross was not enough. Those are temporal sins that, uh, and for how long a person has to suffer in purgatory? Uh, nobody knows, according to the church. Um, the scripture says he suffered once for sin. He, the just, for us, the unjust, that he might bring us to God. So it sounds like we get to heaven, we come to God through the sufferings of Christ on the cross, not through our own sufferings. And Tom, this is such an evil doctrine because it says Christ did not suffer enough to pay the full penalty for our sins. Uh, and that just uh, that is just a slap in the face to Christ. It's a rejection of what the Bible says rejection of what Christ said on the cross. It is finished. To tell us die, paid in full. So that's a tragedy. And as I often say, if the Catholics would just believe what the Bible says, the Catholic Church would be out of business. 
because the Catholic Church is in the business of doing what Christ didn't fully accomplish. And if they believed he had accomplished it, the Catholic Church is out of business. That's their main purpose. You know, the priests can turn the little wafer into the body and blood of Jesus and, and so forth. So anyway, sorry to take off with the Catholics, but I wish if there are some Catholics listening or people who have friends who are Catholics, that they would just check it out. That's what this program is about. Search the scriptures. The Bible is our the Bible is our authority, and as you said, sol, sola scriptura was one of the cries of the reformers. Unfortunately, they didn't follow it themselves. No, it's amazing. Sola fide certainly uh, that was a cry of Luther. Yet you look at the you know the small catechism, the uh, teachings of the the Lutheran Church, and you find much more than sola fide, by faith alone. The small catechism, Luther's small catechism, is used by every Lutheran church of whatever synod or whatever group that they've broken up into, which is a number of them, but they all use that. And uh, it very clearly tells you that you are forgiven of your sins, made a child of God, become a member of the church through your infant baptism. In fact, when a Lutheran baby is baptized, they get a baptismal certificate that says exactly that. Whereas the Bible says baptism is for believers. It is symbolic of having received Christ, identified ourselves with him, and been buried and risen again with him in, in new life. Maybe somebody out there is saying, what are these guys? They're splitting hairs. They're so critical. Jesus said, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. And what was the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? They claimed they kept the law, uh, and if they didn't, there was a sacrifice that was offered for them, supposedly, at the temple, which was still going uh, at that time. Uh, they, uh, I mean, they, what, fasted twice a week, prayed seven times a day. They, they tried to live above society. They, they even uh, added more laws to right. what God had, right. had uh, instituted. So you're not going to get saved by your good works. You will never exceed what the Pharisees did. Uh, well, then our righteousness, our righteousness has to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. It's not by works of righteousness, Scripture says, that he has saved us, but by his mercy. And salvation is not by works because we've already sinned. And as soon as you commit one sin, you're a sinner and you can't make up for sinning in the past by keeping the law perfectly in the future, even if you could. Right. It's separation from God forever. It's an infinite penalty. So uh, how, where does this righteousness come from? Christ is our righteousness. He paid the penalty for our sins. We are accepted in him because of his sacrifice, not because of what we could possibly do by the way of righteousness. In fact, the Bible says all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So as it's often been said, biblical salvation is not about the good works that I must do. It's about the sacrifice Christ has already made. Dave, a friend of mine likes to put it this way. There are only two religions in the world. There's human achievement and divine accomplishment. Very good. Only biblical Christianity fits into divine accomplishment. Everything else is human achievement. Amen. Going well, to church, the sacraments, uh, good works, mm -hmm. uh, whatever it might be, these are all things to try and attain salvation, and it can never happen. Well said. Well, let's get back to uh, Southern... Canada. For more information Supposedly, about the Berean call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 